forth. I'm going to spring up in your life. And I'm going to bring you out to the other side. Let me go on. I want you to think about the voice of the Lord for just a minute. Listen to me. Think about the voice of the Lord. The Lord said to me early this morning, He said, I want you to tell my church, listen, you can hear my voice more clearly in the storm. And let me tell you why. Now, I want, listen, I'm, gonna, I'm not really going to uh, uh, expound upon it for a minute, but here's what He said. He said, I want you to tell them that you can hear my voice more clearly in the storm. Why? Because he said that he comes to give you the strategy to go through and get out of the storm and to make it to the other side. Glory to God. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Think about that. You're going to hear his voice in the midst of your storm. Guaranteed. Every single time. You're going to hear the voice of God. When I was in my storm... I heard the voice of God. He gave me one word. He said, I want you to go to Psalm 103. He said, the first six passages of Scripture, he said, don't ever close your Bible. Keep your Bible with you at all times. He said, I'll bring you out on the other side. See, these are things I've never talked about till tonight. What, did, did I depend upon me? Did I depend upon the doctor? No. Did I depend upon uh, uh, anything in this world? No, I trusted what he told me. And the scripture is, 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 is self-evident. It, it is alive. The scripture is not only a, a, a word that's on these pages, it's alive. When he woke up, when he woke up and they woke him up in their life, everything changed immediately. Everything began to change in their life when he was woke up. And a lot of times, you know, we're just easing along, just kind of going through the motions. And then all of a sudden, man, we're in a real battle. We're in a real storm. And we, we need a real tangible Jesus. I don't need a Jesus on the pages of this Bible anymore. I don't need a Jesus that I can just, you know, have maybe in a self, you know, in my mindset. But I need a, a real live Jesus. I need the King of glory to arise on my behalf. I need the King of glory to arise and, and to come forth and get me out of the mess that the devil's tried to destroy me in. But God is always faithful to us to get us out of that mess. And, and, and let me say something else about the enemy. I'm not going to keep you on. I've just got a few more things I want to tell you. But one thing about the enemy is he takes years. It may be years and years. He, it takes him a long, long time to drum up something against you. That's the way he works. It may take him 10 years. It may take, I mean, it takes him a long time to drum all this stuff up and, and, and come against you with. He can't just do it overnight. He don't have that kind of power. And then when you, listen, and then when you're in the midst and you're in the, in the, in the heat of the battle, listen, listen, this is so important. The one thing that you don't want to lose is you don't want to lose your faith. This is the key to the whole message. The other day I went to see some people. I won't, I'm not going to talk about that and come here and talk about that, but it was an incredible encounter with God in these people's homes. And the Lord, and I mean the Lord, showed up in that place that day. And I remembered that I, I began to preach. I was under the anointing. I was preaching about faith to these people. And about believing God in the midst of the storm, in the midst of their battle. And I remember what the Lord said. He said in, in the book of, of Hebrews, He said, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please the one that is called. When I got here tonight, I knew if I come to the house, I didn't care how many people were here. I don't care how many. I had a word for somebody. And I know the right ones are in the house that are supposed to hear this word and not listen. God said, remember what I said. He said, I am a rewarder of them that diligently seek me. Now, there's a type in that particular scripture right here. Because, man, you're talking about them seeking the Lord. You're talking about a bunch of people in a storm. A bunch of people that are crying out. That man, they were seeking God. They went so much as to shake Him and wake Him. And God, get up, Master. I perish without you. You know what? And there's a lot of truth in that. We will perish without Him. Satan will make sure of it. You know what? He can't do nothing to us because the Master's with us. You know what? Look at your neighbor and say, my boat ain't going to sink. Tell him right now. I'm not going down. I'm going to the other side. 
I'm going to the other side. Let's say it again. Look at your neighbor. Tell him. I want you to tell him again. Say, my boat's not sinking. Church, I'm, I'm going where God's sending me. I'm going where God's telling me to go. I'm going to a place. I'm going to a, to a, a friend. Or I'm going to a person that needs me or, or a nation that needs me or a church that needs me. Or it might be my next door neighbor, but I'm going to go to that place and the devil's not going to keep me from going there. The devil's not going to keep you from going there. I'm going to my place of joy. Amen. I'm going to my secret place. Amen. I'm going to church and the devil's not going to stop me. I'm going to get up to that next place with God and the devil's not going to stop me. I'm going to get up to, and I'm going to begin to praise his name early in the morning and the devil's not going to stop me. I'm not going to get up and say, oh Lord, I'm going to get up and say, hello, good morning, Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm telling you right now that God wants me to encourage you tonight to expound upon his voice and that his voice, when you hear the voice of the Lord, if you'll obey the voice of the Lord and what God tells you to do, amen. God told them one thing. He said, you know what? Let us. I'm not going without you. I'm, you're not going by yourself. Look at me. You're not, you're not going alone. You're not going as a single person. You're going with God because God is going with you. He's going all the way with you, church. He's not going to stop. He's not going to let go. He's not going to change his mind. He's not going to say, well, I made a mistake. That's not the God I serve. That's not the God. Look at me, Abba. That's not the God you serve. God's not made a mistake. Amen. Somebody help me preach right now. God's not made a mistake. God said, we're going over. Hallelujah to the other side. Are you ready to go over to the other side? God said, tonight, this night, this very moment, God wants me to encourage you. He said, you know what? Just launch out with me. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. How are we going to get anything done for the kingdom of God if we don't ever get off the bank? How are we ever going to get anything done in the kingdom of God if we don't trust God and, 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 and follow God wholeheartedly? I'm not talking about on Wednesday, Sunday. I'm talking about following Him all the days of our life, church. Because you're going to be in a storm. Your life, you ought to embrace that storm. Because great things are going to happen in the midst of that storm. God is going to change your heart. He's going to change the way you look at Him. He's going to change the ideas that you had of Him before. He's going to become so much greater and so much bigger in your life than He's ever been before. My God, will somebody say amen in this place? You're going to see God in a new direction. You're going to see God in a new light. You're going to see how great big He is. You're going to see how faithful He truly is. He's going to hold you up. He's going to rebuke the devil, praise God. You know what? And you're tormenting the devil right now just by being here. He hates the very fact that you're in the house of God. You're all, look at somebody and say, I'm a tormentor of the devil. Look at him and tell him, you're a tormentor of the devil. We're tormenting the devil. Leave us alone. I hear him sometimes saying, leave us alone. Leave us alone. No, we're in a, we're in a warfare. Amen. And he was going to go somewhere. He, Jesus was on his way to go somewhere. He was going to go over to the other side where there was a man that no man could tame. No man could help. No man could deliver. But the king got off the boat. He probably was the first one that stepped off the boat. Amen. He'll be the first one to step into your war he'll be the first one to step into your battle my God I feel something now he'll be the first one hallelujah to step out praise God on your behalf he'll be the first one that'll step out in front of the devil and they'll run to him but begin to worship and he'll say who are you he said we are legion we are many he'll say go no matter how many comes against you no matter how big the battle looks no matter what kind of chains the devil tries to hold you in. No matter what diagnosis or what prognosticator has told you. My word tells me that many are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord shall deliver him out of them all. He said in his word he'll raise you up. He said though you fall down six times, yea seven. He said I'll pick you up again. If you believe it, you ought to shout your hand to God. You ought to raise your hands and thank him tonight. God is a faithful God if you believe it. Well somebody shout my God is the God of all gods. Amen. He stepped off the boat. Amen. He got off the boat that time. And when he stepped stepped off the boat, that man ran to him and he began to worship him. All them devils couldn't keep him from worshiping the king. You're going to get this in a minute. The night I died, first of all, the, first, the, the, the second greatest battle I had in my storm, the first greatest one, I got the most incredibly bad news, man, my heart. She didn't know. My children didn't know. 
You know what I did when I, I went and got my guitar? And I began to worship Him. Tears slowing down my face. I worshiped Him. Everything changed. I'm going somewhere. Then that night that I died when I went downstairs, I fell on my face and I began to worship Him and I began to cry out and I said, Yahweh. I never call Him Yahweh. He had me call Him Yahweh. He, he's the one that, that set all this up. So I could be here tonight to tell you those that are in a storm that you're coming out. And how you come out in the midst of the storm, begin to worship God. This, this, th there is a lot of truth in this whole thing. It's all tied together. They had just come out of a great revival in the, in the first part of this scripture. Devils were being cast. I like to cast out devils. We have the power, church. I don't say it arrogantly. You bring me somebody's demon possessed, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord, I, 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 we'll cast them devils out of They can't stay. They don't have the power to stay. They don't have the authority. They don't have the authority to stay in your life. They don't have the authority to destroy you. They don't have the authority to keep you down. God's the one that has the authority in your life. I began to cry out, Yahweh, protect me. And he did. When he came, he looked at me, church. He began to worship. He might have had, I don't know, he might have had 100,000 demons in him. I don't know. But on the inside of him, there was, a, there was a real soul in there that belonged to God. And he said, I just want to, he began to worship him. Amen. And, and in the midst of, of, of that chaos, in the midst of that battle, begin to praise him. You, I mean, you'll go from praise into worship. What Ralph's talking about, but when I'm talking about worship, what it is, is you're saying to God, God, I'm coming to you because you're the only source I have. You're the only one that can do this. When you worship God, you worship God for who He is. That's true worship. That's why He said He seeks for such to worship Him. And you can start out worship in prayer. You can start out worship by talking to God. You can, you can, you can bring God an offering in worship. You can come to God in secret. Nobody should know anyway. Come to God and say, God, you're my source. And begin to tell Him. And all of a sudden, you begin to break out into singing. And you go from singing into praise into worship. But you're worshiping God. You're acknowledging God. Because God is the master over the storms. Amen. God is the one who speaks peace to your life. God is the one that will change the battle, the circumstance, the storm. Uh, this, this tempest that the devil has tried to bring in your life. Praise God. Then I don't want to encourage you that you will have moments in the rain praise God but I got some great gospel news God's going to be the umbrella over you amen he's going to make sure hey, hallelujah come on give him a hand clap he's going to make sure that you come out of that storm and then what happens I promise you I'm not going to keep you no longer in this I'm gonna, I'll have one more close and what happens when you come out what happens when you're on the other side, I preached on it one time. When you're on the other side of the attack looking back, does that mean, hey, look at me? No, no. No, it, it, it's, it's made you different. And what you do is you turn around and you run back into the storm. You turn around and you run back into the storm with Jesus and you help those others that are in that storm. And you help them out. You know, years ago, before I ever saw any of you all, before I ever knew I was going to be in a pulpit, I had a vision on a Saturday afternoon. You're talking about a battle. And in my vision, I was sitting in the middle of a jungle. I'm telling you, I'll give them to count for God. In the middle of a jungle. And to the left of me was nothing but just looked like just the thickest forest, just the thickest bunch of junk. But I'm sitting there, and the sun's shining. I've been in a great warfare. I've come out. My life is, I felt like I'm doing pretty good at this time. And I'm sitting there, uh, it looked like, literally, uh, in the spirit realm, like in a jungle. And there was a great big pool of water and vines, I can see it, and there was a waterfall. And I was sitting on the beach and the sunshine was just coming down right there just around the waterfall. And I heard the voice of God says, what are you doing sitting here, son? I said, what do you mean, God? I said, I just come out of the jungle. He said, that's good now that I brought you out of the jungle. And you know the way out of the jungle. He said, I want you to get up 
and I want you to go back in and I want you to bring others out. I want you, I'll never forget that. And that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm bringing you out by faith. I'm bringing you out by the Word of God. I'm bringing you out by the unction of the Spirit of God. I'm telling you tonight, I, I'm exhorting you tonight, I'm encouraging every one of you tonight that there is no devil, there is no storm, there is no tempest, praise God, that my God doesn't rise up and speak to in the midst of your storm. If you believe it, somebody shout amen in this place.